again, everybody. Coming to a moment tonight that is near and dear to my heart because it's my era. And I know for a lot of you folks in the room, uh, the Love You Blue Oilers were very special. And I want to introduce a lady that's near and dear to my heart, very close to the wife of legendary coach Bum Phillips, Debbie Phillips. Dante, I'm so honored to get to be here tonight. What a great show tonight, wasn't it? Hadn't it been so far? Um, you've always been, it, it's fine, high time for you to be honored. You need to be in many different Hall of Fames. Um, I'm here to read uh, a letter of congratulations for my good friend Amy Adams Strunk, who's uh, Bud Adams' daughter and now the controlling partner of the Tennessee Titans. She sent along a short message that I'd like to read. My family and I are extremely pleased that Dan Pastorini is joining Earl Campbell as Houston Oilers in this Hall of Fame. It's so appropriate that his induction comes on the 40th anniversary of the Love You Blue era when Dan and Coach Phillips were the heartbeat of those teams. My congratulation also goes, also goes out to Jackie Burke, A.J. Foy, and George Foreman. As icons in the world of sports, your induction in, into this Hall of Fame is richly deserved. Congratulations to all the honorees tonight as you celebrate the greatness of Houston sports. Again, Dan, I'm so thrilled to be here, and you know there's no one that would be more thrilled that you're going in than Bum. Uh -oh. He's smiling down on all of you tonight. And here we go. One year ago, we knocked on the door. This year, we beat on the door. Next year, we're going to kick the son of a bitch in. Love, love you blue. You know that we do. We'll always be true. Cause we love you blue. The city was dynamic. Uh, everybody I thought had an oil well in, in their backyard. And the economy was awesome. Oil, real estate was booming. Obviously, the sports teams were pretty good too, and certainly the Oilers were. It's a lot of people you can't really, when I first got here, meet a real live Houstonian. Everybody came, was imported, imports here, and they needed something to just love and to get behind. And we were that group of guys that everybody loved and shared the same kind of love back with each other. Uh, Dan was the big brother to all of us. If Houston gave Dan one cowboy hat, they had to give out another 54 hats for every Houston all of He was the golden boy with the golden arm. He had talent. Play action is looking. It's going to go across the middle for Burrow at the one-yard line. Touchdown! Oilers lead it 29-24. He had looks, and he had charisma. But the characteristics that made Dante Passerini the ultimate teammate to those Love You Blue Oilers were passion, toughness, and leadership. Straight pro set. Passerini back to throw, looking far side of the field. It has Woods out there at the 30. Now breaks it out. 35, 40 at the 50. He may go. He led by example. I mean, I mean, people played hurt because I think because they saw Dan play hurt. I mean, Earl played hurt. I played hurt. Everybody played hurt. Little Knicks didn't bother us, but we know. We had four quarters that we had to get through. We knew that Dan Pastorini would call the plays and we just had to execute. But what Pastorini would be most remembered for was his toughness. He played through fractured vertebrae. A broken tibia, multiple concussions. 
ankle strains, pulls, and contusions. To start and get through a playoff game with broken ribs, he was the first quarterback to ever wear a flak jacket in an NFL game. Dad kept this, that team together, you know, because Kenny Burroughs had a lot of respect for him. Robert Bazile had respect for him. And me coming in as a rookie, and I saw how they embraced this guy. I was like, man, I got to love him. Against some of the teams, he took some beatings, and boy, he just hung in there. In today's football, they don't make guys do that. And I'm not sure a lot of quarterbacks today could have went through what Dan went through, because he just hung in there and made plays. God would follow Dan anywhere. He was that type of person. Just committed. If he is in a position to lead, he's going to lead. He wants to win. And you know, with people like that, you know, you're, you're going to give it your all. He gave it all. Dan left everything on the field. We did not go to the locker room saying, if I could have, would have, should have. We left everything in the Astrodome. Hold up, hold up. I got one thing I want to say now. Everybody in this room deserves a game ball, but don't believe anybody deserves one more than number seven. Yeah. Hey. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a real good time to adjust your underwear. It's, we've been here a long time, so I appreciate, appreciate all of you getting up. Uh, you know, uh, I, what I really do appreciate is, is recognizing the Love You Blue era. Um, and obviously Dan was, was the focal point of that, uh, but uh, that era, uh, well, let me tell you one thing about that era and about the Houston fans. Okay, I'm with the Rams. We won the NFC uh, this year, and we had 15,000 people at the send-off for us. We had 15,000. The New England Patriots won, won the AFC, and they had 35,000 people out there for a winner. When we came back from Pittsburgh after getting beat in the Astrodome, there were over 50,000 Houston people on a team that did not win. That's what kind of fans we have here. And that's what I think lifted up Houston as, as the, the Love You Blue era carried on to the great, great fans, and we appreciate that. Uh, Dan Pastorini, you know, I, I say let it because the quarterback, uh, everybody knows the quarterback is the, guy, the focal point and the leader of a team, and that's what Dan, Dan was. He was a, a great leader. And that's, that's what it takes to have that kind of football team. And besides that, he's a tough guy. Now, uh, the, they, he had flag jackets when, uh, when nobody else had them. And the reason he had them because he had broken ribs and he played with it. So he was a tough guy on the team, but also a great leader. Um, I'm so proud of him. He's like a brother to me. Uh, an older brother? No. Uh, <laughs> A younger brother, but uh, but you know, Houston uh, Houston's home for me, obviously. But but Dan's from California, and he and he came to Houston, and even at the end of his career, he was he was in California, but he chose to be back in Houston because he loved Houston. He loved the city of Houston. He loved the people of Houston, and obviously, he's done great things throughout with his charities and so forth. Uh, with Be an Angel Charity and giving back to the community. And, and that's why he's such, he's such a caring person that he's not only a great football player, but he's a great person. And that's what I appreciate about him uh, the most. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm honored to be here uh, to, uh, to have Dan come into the, to this Hall of Fame because he's, he's, uh, he's the epitome of what, what a Hall of Fame guy should be. And I'm, I'm proud to uh, present Dan Pastorini as, as a Hall of Famer. Thank you.
Wade's, Wade's gonna give you Wade's gonna give you the jacket. Uh, is that is that your flak jacket underneath? Huh? And the uh, that's from Not Standard, by the way. And uh, Fred Cuellar is going to show you the ring they're going to bring you. And of course, your trophy for the Hall of Fame. Yeah, take a picture. All right. Okay, Dan. Thank take you. it, baby. Thank you. <clears throat> First of all, I want to thank the Houston Sports Hall of Fame for selecting me. But I'm going to accept this award not for me, but for the Love You Blue players that are here in force tonight, the Love You Blue fans. the city of Houston, and how you supported us through those times. I came here in 1971. We went 4-9-1, and 1-13, and 1-13. And and I was kind of questioning my career choice. <laughs> and we were in the toughest division. The AFC Central was the toughest division with Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, us, and Cleveland. And those were four really tough teams, especially from the mid-'70s on. The Steelers were always the team to beat. And in 1979, when we lost to them up there, that was a heartbreaker. You know, we, we thought we kind of got a bad call. Everybody saw the, the touchdown and everything else. Now, I don't know if we'd have won, but we'd have tied the score late in the third quarter, and I liked our chances because we had one hell of a defense. We had a defense that could match the Pittsburgh Steelers. As long as we didn't give them bad field position, we could take advantage and take our shots and possibly win that game. But when you had to play catch up against the Pittsburgh Steelers steel curtain, forget it. The odds are against you. And I'll tell you, we saw that film there and off, walking off the field, you saw me and Joe Green. And Joe Green's, I love you like a brother. You're a warrior. We had great games against you. And your team, we brought out the best of each other. I remember one year we played, and the next day there were 23 guys on the injured list. <laughs> Bradshaw went out, Hanratty went out, Tony Dungy played quarterback. Tony Dungy actually intercepted a pass for a touchdown and threw a touchdown pass. John Hale and I got hurt. Guido Merkins was playing quarterback. And I think we lost the game 17 to 14 or something like that. But the next day there were 23 guys that were injured. I think I played in the greatest time with the greatest people of all time. I want, to I want to congratulate Jackie Burke and A.J. Foyt and George Foreman. A.J. Foyt, man, I watched you when I was nine years old, watching you race in the Indy 500. You inspired me to get into racing. Jackie Burke, I remember in the early days, the Dallas Cowboys were the team in this town. And I complained to the golf association, said, why don't we ever get a chance as Oilers to play in the Houston Open down here. So finally I got invited and Jackie Burke played with me that day and we won the Pro-Am. George Foreman, you're the exact reason I never tried to climb into a ring. I thank you for this award. We had a good coach. We had a good coach that brought this city together and brought a team together that's like family. And these guys, for the last nine years, have come in for my tournament to support a charity and help raise over a million dollars doing that. <clears throat> I'm blessed to have them as friends. This award is us. It's not me. It's us. And I want to thank the Insperity people who have supported my charities for years, who I work with on a regular basis. They've sponsored this deal. They're the first people to step up and, and help. And I just I want to thank Jay and Paul and Steve and everybody.
there's one person I got to thank who straightened my life out some 10 years ago. And uh, I had a problem. I didn't have a problem drinking. I just had a lot of problems when I drank. <laughs> so it'll be nine years this April 26th, but my girlfriend, Pam Morse, gave me an ultimatum, but the biggest thing she did and helped me do was to get back and reunited with my daughter, Bronna Marie. So, it's that Irish-Italian blood coming out in me right now, so my mother would cry over a good steak, but I just, I, I just can't tell you all what this means to me. And I love the city of Houston. And by the way, the House of Representatives, the Texas House of Representatives, gave me a bill saying that I am an official Texan because I spent most of my adult life here. So, <laughs> I only go back to California to visit. So anyway, thank you all. God bless you all. Congratulations to my fellow recipients. I'm honored to be amongst you. Love you, Blue. I love you guys. You know that. God bless you all. Tell them to stand up. Yes. Can I have the Love You Blue guys stand up? And, and Joe, you're a Love You Blue guy, tell too. Them, you can them, stand up. up. Hey, come on up. All you guys, come up here. Come, come on. on. I'm the last one. Come on. Yeah, the great, the great Robert Brazil. Look at that football. Here we come. Houston Oilers, number one. Houston has the Oilers. Greatest football team. We move the ball from goal to goal like no one's ever seen. We're in the air, we're on the ground, always in control. And when you're talking in order, you're talking Super Bowl, because we're the Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers number one. the offense, we've got the defense, we give the other team no hope, we're the Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers, you know we're gonna shoot the road, yeah we're the Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers, number one, five, seven, eight. We're the best in the Lone Star State. Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers, number one forever and ever.